Okay, here's a complaint that uh, there's no pressure, or excuse me, there's no burner, no heat. Customer complaint. Seems like that's a recurring issue. <clears throat> In that previous training video on this exact same machine, we talked about a uh, restricted fuel flow. And um, this technician thought that maybe that was a problem again, so came here, first thing we did was we undid this plumbing underneath, made sure there wasn't any garbage in the tank, and there was a little bit, you can see some accumulation right there, it came out of the tank. Still uh, no burner, so got the voltmeter, go back and original uh, troubleshooting procedure on an oil fire burner with no, with, uh, no fire is uh, we have to verify whether or not it's a voltage or a mechanical issue, so we pull out the plug and we do our voltage check. Our voltage check here is 110, which seems pretty good, except the holding coil is 220. So we know we're not getting the power. So what we got to do is we have to back up this uh, electrical and reverse trace the power and find out where the power is being interrupted at. So the way we do that is go ahead and just follow the power out, kind of trace out and see what's happening with the power, where it's going. In this case, after that junction box and it comes up to the rotary switch, which we pull out. While we're doing this, we unplug the machine. The machine is over here in the stainless steel box. We want to make sure that because all these wires are exposed that we don't get electrocuted. Follow out the power and basically what we find is that the power comes off of the rotary switch. From the rotary switch then it comes over to a pressure switch. And then from the pressure switch it goes to the thermostat. And then from the thermostat then it continues on down to the fuel solenoid valve. So that if the gun is closed, the pressure switch interrupts the power to the to the uh, solenoid, interrupting the fuel, shutting the burner off. Or if um, the maximum heat is attained, then the thermostat control interrupts the power supply and uh, shuts off the fuel solenoid, shutting off the fuel, turning the burner off. So what I did was uh, I went ahead and I just uh, bypassed this thermostat right here with a jumper wire, checked my voltage, made no difference. Came over here and took the cover off of the pressure switch, pulled the pressure switch out, operated the micro switch, everything looks good, feels good. So then I went ahead and it still didn't make any difference. Every time I do something like this, I check for my voltage down there, operate the machine, plug it back in, making the rotary, rotary switch safe to operate, plug the machine back in again, call for burner, check for voltage, still we're only at 120, one time I got 140, which is kind of a goofy voltage to have. So then I thought, well, then what I probably need to do is go ahead and instead of putting a jumper on this thermostat, then I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, put my voltmeter on here. And so I put my voltmeter on uh, one side of the rotary switch and then the other side, uh, the other leg, to uh, the input side of my thermostat to see if I have voltage going from one side to the other. And uh, I was reading some kind of goofy voltage, like 53 volts, kind of weird, 53 in, 53 out. So if you get the same voltage going in, same voltage going out, then that pretty much, we, we can eliminate this switch because at least it's passing the same voltage through the switch that it's receiving. So that's good. Then I came over here to the pressure switch. And I'm looking at the pressure switch and before I had a chance to get my voltmeter out of the corner of my eye, I saw some wire nuts. So what's happened is that whoever's replaced this pressure switch, instead of running the cord all the way into the junction box, what they did was they got lazy and they cut the wires and they put wire nuts and then when you look real close at this wire then you can see that it's plumb clean it burned clean in two except for one or two strands right there how did that happen well if you look at the way the wire is laid pressure switch being in that in that location up and down and then the wire comes down look at where it lays it lays right there by the burner head so it's just a matter of time before the heat coming out of the burner of the heat exchanger is going to burn those wires in two all because had the guy replaced the pressure switch and and uh, zip tied the cord to this plumbing and then ran this cord all the way up into the junction box without these silly wire nuts then this would have never happened so because there was a previous technician from another company wasn't ours got quick got lazy wanted to do a real fast job get out of here now this customer has to pay for another service call not counting the money now it's the inconvenience of downtime so we'll explain this to the customer let them know we'll do the repair and uh, hopefully that won't happen again so if you have any questions talk to your supervisor or contact us at www.aefresno.com